up in Wisconsin is the Dora Peninsula. It projects out into Lake Michigan with Lake Michigan on one side and Green Bay on the other. There used to be a railroad that served that Dora Peninsula and I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. Yep, the Anape and Western Railway. It served the Dora Peninsula, it served Kiwani and Dora counties. But what about it obsesses me? Well, the family farm was up near Sturgeon Bay, almost at the end of the line. And there's a photo of my aunt and my mom sitting up on the hill, the ridge above Shiloh Road. And way down in the background is the right of way for the Anape and Western Railway. So I've spent over 50 years exchanging stories with family members and neighbors and this last spring I made a trip up there and I did a hike, a walk, a drive along the old right-of-way and I'd like to share that with you. Luxembourg, Wisconsin. This is east of Green Bay and west of Lake Michigan and I'm down here so I can take a look at where the Anape and Western Railroad used to be. The end of the line at Luxembourg. From Luxembourg, the rest of the old Anape and Western is trail. Luxembourg is that way to the east and we're going to work our way down this way towards Casco. A key to understanding the Anape and Western Railroad is the geography of the Door Peninsula in northeast Wisconsin. This railroad was built to serve several port towns, but the nature of the lake and the Anape River and the Kiwani River and some decent sized hills and valleys and swamps met that there had to be kind of a hodgepodge network of rails. And we're going to be coming up on Casco and Casco Junction soon. So this railroad doesn't really run in a straight line. It does a bunch of doubling back in order to get to the different towns. Casco Junction is an important key in this system. Casco Junction. The next branch of the roadbed we're going to explore is the one that goes down to Kiwani. After that, we're going to head up to Casco. That will lead on to Sturgeon Bay. And going back this way,
That would take you back to Luxembourg. On our way to Kiwani, the right of way goes through a swamp. The Kiwani River near Kiwani. That way is Kiwani. That will go back to Casco Junction and Luxembourg. In Kiwani, very close to Lake Michigan, there was a regular track network here. There was industry, commercial accounts, there was even a track that went out to the ferry dock. The shore area of Kiwani has changed in the last 50 years. Even the state highway has changed course over here. This was the track that came out towards the ferry dock and what used to be called Kiwani Engineering. That's the Kiwani Harbor and the Lake Michigan. This is coming in the town into Kiwani on that north leg, the industrial lead of the Anapian Western. Here's where it crosses the Kiwani River. And from there, it goes straight to the lake. It's really hard to tell where the tracks used to be in Kiwani. This is the last little stretch of industrial lead that more or less snaked to the south side of the harbor. And on to Lake Michigan. Now this finishes the Kiwani part of the tour. What we're going to do now is backtrack up to Casco, and from Casco we're going to start heading up towards Algoma. I'm in Casco. That's looking down towards Casco Junction, which is 
few miles away. County C goes right through the heart of town. And heading this way is the Algoma branch and the Sturgeon Bay branch. There would have been a grade crossing at Highway 54. That's been removed a long time ago. Some people say Rao Crick, some people say Rio Crick. That's looking back towards Casco. And we're going to keep on heading this way. Coming out of Rowell Creek, then the tracks would have crossed at Chestnut. Coming into Algoma, we see the trail. In Algoma, it's much easier to trace the old right away. This stretch is making its way into town towards the lake. Here are the remains of a bulk oil plant. And through here, and down to the lake. A lot of rebuilding, a lot of remodeling, some teardowns around here. So the Anape and Western came all the way out to Algoma. Algoma being a port, they were able to put goods directly on the ships or service the industries that were along the river here.
Incidentally, Algoma is the namesake of the Anape and Western Railroad. The reason for that being Algoma's original name was Anape. And this would have been the eastern terminus on Lake Michigan for the railroad. So from Anape, you could go west to Green Bay. I'm south of Forestville. I'm backtracking a little. I'm heading towards the Anape River uh, where the bridge used to be. The Forestville area was a real problem for the builders of the Anape and Western. At the infamous Forestville Swamp, it took forever to drop material into the swamp so they could build the right-of-way. Just as soon as they would put material into the swamp, the swamp would swallow it up. Heading back that way is going towards Forestville. The Anape River. And this will take you back to Algoma. This is the bridge that washed out sometime in the 1980s and has since been replaced with a light footbridge. There's the footing for the original bridge. Copy that? Sure can. Okay, Algoma and the Anape River and all that's way down that way. This is Forestville. Forestville Business District's up over there. And this way to Sturgeon Bay and Maplewood. Looking down towards Forestville. And we're on Cherry Road. And this will go north towards Maplewood. I'd like to mention the cherries up in Door County. That's one of the big crops. And the Anape and Western uh, was known for running dedicated refrigerator trains with nothing but cherries at the harvest time in August. Mill Road looking south, southwest. Down that way is Forestville and one of the big swamps. Coming this way. We're approaching Maplewood. And then there's another swamp woody area on the other side of Maplewood. We're in Maplewood. There's a little bit of industry in this town. And then this way the tracks go north to Sturgeon Bay.
the old Idlewild Road grade crossing. The old railroad was in the home stretch when it came through here. We're not too far from Sturgeon Bay. A little bit of meandering, some nice easy curves, and we'll be there. South towards Maplewood, that's Taggy Road. I believe this is Stony Creek. at the old Wilson Road grade crossing. This is now in the city limits of Sturgeon Bay, but we're still about two and a half miles from the water. This part of the railroad hasn't been used and 50 years. There was a big bridge that went across Sturgeon Bay and when it got hit by a ship there was no more access to the shipyards. But the biggest industry out of commission, the owners of the railroad, basically shut down the line from Algoma to Sturgeon Bay. Once we get the Shiloh Road finding the original roadbed becomes next to impossible. Part of the reason that the roadbed is so hard to find is there was a sand and gravel operation down in this area along Shiloh Road. Uh, they preserved the original roadbed for a while, but then that too finally got dug up. Oxford and what's now known as the new highway bypass. The railroad curved around right down in here. And went across over there. That's the old Anape and Western Diesel House in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. It's now being used by a maritime salvage company. But the tracks would have come down off a of Shiloh Road, come right through this little corridor, and had it. Tracks would have come along here. I think this little piece of parking lot was rededicated railway land. The bridge immediately in front of us is the new Maple Bridge, and that cast iron steel bridge there, that's the old Michigan Bridge. This area has been massively reconstructed. I'm standing on the old embankment that goes out into the body of water known as Sturgeon Bay. Yeah, the tracks came right out here. Well, 45, 50 years ago, I would have gotten in serious trouble for walking out here. But I'm at the end of the embankment. There's the Michigan Bridge. The old draw. But this was the first bridge. And the railroad tracks pretty much went straight across at this point. And the other side has also been massively rebuilt 
Over there are the shipyards. That's the big one, Bay Ship. Just to the other side of the bridge was Palmer Johnson Yachts and further down by the new Maple Bridge that was the Peterson Boat Works. The tracks went across here and when they got to the other side there was a branch that went to the east, a branch that went to the west. And here's the end of the line. This is the Sturgeon Bay Passenger Depot on the east side of Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. I've been up here before and I've made another film dealing with just this structure. Let's just take a quick walk around it. This was pretty busy when they had the German POWs up here back in 1945 and 1946. Camp Sturgeon Bay Prisoner of War Camp was something like 1,800 prisoners. Outside of that, there weren't too many people that would come into Sturgeon Bay. Being the end of the line, there wasn't much of a passenger service up here. This area has been radically built, rebuilt. I can't even say with any certainty where the tracks used to be over here. I can tell you one, that I ate here once when it was an Italian restaurant in Boo Pub. So this is the back side of the Sturgeon Bay shipyard. They just took control of this city street, but essentially the tracks would have come along through this area, swung here, came through here. And don't hold me to this, but I want to say there was, oh, maybe another block's worth of track past this station. They had some sort of switchback, so they didn't have to worry too much about uh, turning the engines around. They had both steam and diesel here. the tracks are long gone just like the old family farm up at Sturgeon Bay but the memories are strong I hope you have enjoyed this tour I hope that you will have a chance to visit the Dora Peninsula Kiwani and Dora counties and see this trail for yourself it's great for hiking biking snowmobiles horseback riding you name it there's a lot of things to do in the area, a lot of beautiful scenery. But if you do make it up there, give yourself a few moments to close your eyes and picture what it would have looked like in the old days when the trains were running. Thank you again for watching. I'll be continuing the research to Anape and Western, and I'll be presenting more information in the future.